So, uh, well, actually, speaking of profane, moving on to our, our fourth, uh, not so much news segment, but 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 thing that caught our attention this month uh, is the fairly mundane, not so much profane, I suppose, but fairly mundane uh, task that many academics find themselves faced with. Uh, and that is, especially if you're going to be a reader, for example, of archaeology, or if you want to be a doctor or something like that, or PhD, yeah, you need to be going to conferences, and and especially for example in America, you need to be getting citations and so on and so forth. Absolutely. And and get, you need to get your metrics. Yeah, yeah, woo! Uh, that, that's that's something which would just drive me crazy. Uh, but uh, this this whole well, our conversation or our thoughts about this have really been sparked by a tweet from Dr. Donna Yates, uh, where she said, "Warning! I just got this email for a fake slash predatory archaeology conference." Uh, please, no, so do not attend, and please warn your students away from it. It is owned by the OC, uh, OMICS group, or OMICS group, which currently is being pursued by the US uh, FTC um, for basically being fraudulent. Um, but this is, this is, this, it's not so much that we wanted to talk about this particular instance, but the fact that this is possible, the fact that you can have people preying on the need of academics to turn up at conferences to, to, to yeah. prove that their their work is being uh, being cited and therefore the middle ground that would say the middle step there is to go out there and talk about your work so that people then put it in their papers uh is interesting it's, it's a whole industry and 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 i know i know the thing that you uh, often come back to is this question of well who is benefiting from this industry uh, does it benefit the archaeologists uh, for example and, and i'll hand over to you just in just a second for example i can't afford to go to conferences and i'm i, I you know i'd love to hear about some of this research so who is actually benefiting from this stuff i think that's one of the key questions that we face as a sector at the moment mm. uh, and and it's we face it for a whole number of reasons i mean you know that scam which is what it appears to be uh, uh, allegedly, mm -hmm. I should add the caveat. It's under. It, it appears to be under. The company appears to be under investigation in the states. Yeah. Um, a scam like that can exist because higher education, academic research is a marketplace. Yeah. Um, there are. We, we you know we talked about treasure wrecks being uh, uh, underwater archaeology being monetized by commercial companies the other day. You know, academic research is market. Every aspect of academic. Academic research is marketized in some form or another. Mm -hmm. Well, monetized, uh, I suppose. Yeah. Monetized, yeah. 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 Monetized, mm -hmm. marketized, um, and well, what, what, I, I, what... First be, I, I first became aware of, of this kind of thing happening uh, a few years back. I was talking to a senior academic at a British university um, who had told this told the story that they'd been approached to write a paper for a book. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So far, so good. Um, get your metrics. Get your papers yeah. published. Yeah. Get your paper published. You can get citations for your paper. Maybe earn a couple of quid. Yeah. Maybe. This is where this is the, where it gets interesting. The, the conversation then developed to um, uh, we'll we'll only uh, you'll only uh, be expected to contribute x hundred pounds to the con uh, to the publication. At which point the conversation ended with two Anglo-Saxon expletives, the second of which was off. Um, it was a, it, again, it was an attempt to scam uh, to get to get money yeah. out of uh, the the need to it, it, well, it, vanity, whatever, however, whatever human emotions it's playing to, whether it's yeah. fear for your academic tenure or just wanting to see your name in print. Mm. Yeah, you know, a certain number of people might well have um, said, "Yeah, okay." You know, they may have had the they may have the income. Their their their, their uni, you know, their department might have had a budget for publication, which that meant they could have. You know, it's uh, I, I I don't know in that case if the book ever went ahead, but the fact that you know that that that's that approach was being made, I think was a was the first sort of uh, flashing red light alarm for me mm. about the fact that this stuff's going on. And, and this actually is, has, has happened to me. I mean, I don't I don't have a PhD, but I have had people approach me and say, oh, um, oh, you, you know, you have a, 
an archaeological presence in the world would you like to write a paper about public archaeology and i'm like oh yeah that sounds interesting and then it's almost i mean really it's, it's one step away from saying you have to sew the hardback binder onto the manuscript yourself you know it's like it uh it, it 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 i think the thing that frustrates me we put the money to one side for a moment but the thing that frustrates me there is that it also as well makes it feel it doesn't it takes away as that and as it were from from the feeling of achievement so in that instance i i, I couldn't afford what they're asking in terms of putting a paper in a book but also if i knew that i essentially was it's like it's like a bat you know like one of these sad bands that you hear where they you know, they buy up, up well say one of these sad bands you know, the Bee Gees apparently bought up all the copies of one of their first singles just to try and get it onto the charts but that's yeah. what it feels like it feels like you're being forced to do that you're you're having to cannibalize as it were your own um your own uh, uh academic integrity mm. in order to, to 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 get something out there in order to 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 please a system which again, ultimately, the question is who who is actually benefiting. I think I, I was fascinated by by the fact that again, when we were preparing the agenda for for this watching brief, you quoted a price for a book about public archaeology. Shall I shall I quote it to our audience? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Okay, this is a brand new um, book in the highly reputable Oxford Handbook series. Uh -huh. It's uh, available for pre order at the moment on a certain. Um, a certain marketplace website beginning with A. Um, for de, uh, it's published on the first of first uh, of September. Um, it's in the it's the Oxford Handbook of Public Heritage Theory and Practice. It's about public archaeology and public heritage. It's about reaching out to the public. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, the hardcover is ninety seven quid and the Kindle is seventy seven quid. <laughs> now. <laughs> You ask yourself how many members of the public, let alone you know how many underpaid, yeah. overworked you know, museum curators, if they're still in a job, can afford that. Univer you know, university libraries are starting are cutting back on their on their acquisitions. And and for for a for a relatively niche book like that, is that going to be something that the library sees fit to purchase? It, 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 exactly. Yeah. You, you know exactly. You you might. Okay, maybe there's a public archaeology module in your archaeology degree while you've still got an archaeology degree at your department, yeah. um, or uh, in your humanities department, and um, so maybe they'll buy a, maybe they'll get a copy. Hmm. Hmm. Um, well, and then actually, a, bit, a, a step down from that, a step down from the from the the the, the wholesale, as it were, I guess, retail, you know, purchasing. There's also the fact that that students will feel compelled to have to read whatever's on the reading list. I unfortunately was one of those students who tried to read everything on the reading list because I was, I was I didn't know <laughs> I didn't know any it's better. Too conscientious. Yeah, I was like I must read everything here, and of that's course a, that stressed me out. Doing, doing, doing background research before writing an essay, good grief. Yeah, but but, 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 but I yeah I didn't just read the background. I, I was I was peeling the background back and then poking it, and I got very stressed. But I, I got yeah. even more stressed by the fact that some of these books, uh, because one copy was in the library because it was so expensive people yeah. would then hoard that book. So people actually wouldn't really care if they got a fine on it. Because right. frankly, having a, a rolling fine that amounts to maybe 30 quid in a year is nothing compared to buying the book in, in, in reality. So, so there's one book actually that I still have on my shelves called Tripolitania. The Archaeology of Tripolitania. And it's just so annoying because that book, I think still, actually, I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll have a look now on the marketplace that shall not be named. Uh, I, I bought that book Cry me a river. <laughs> I bought that book, and I found myself thinking, "Oh, it's fine. Look at look at how 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 um uh how expensive it is. It, it'll be. I'll be able to 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 to, to sell this on." Um, and uh, no, no, that's not possible. I can't. Now, uh, there you go. So the hardcover still. This is sort of maybe ten years after I bought it. The hardcover is still sixty four pounds and ten pence and that's actually the the least expensive new version as it were uh then no, no, it's a used version rather sorry um the least expensive new is 77 pounds 21 plus the 399 delivery and there are some people here uh for example um uh, a book com a book shop or company in texas united states because it's a specialist book they're trying they're asking 183 pounds and six pence for this thing 
Yeah. And so this book, Tripolitania by David J. Mattingly, probably won't have reached much of an audience because very few, you know, I, it's not like I had money to burn. I just thought, I need to read this thing. So I, I shelled out and I, I probably spent, from memory, close to £100 to try and get hold of this thing. Because at that point, North Africa was a crucial focus of the module that I was doing at that, you know, the, yeah, the, the, the essays I was having to write. I needed to be able to get, get hold of it. Uh, and now I can't sell it on. So actually, again, who is benefiting? It's not even as though the commodity itself maintains... Uh, a value because okay it's being valued at up to 183 pounds or at least for uh, 64 pounds 10 pence for a used copy here the kindle edition is 33.59 um but but no one's buying it so it's effectively it's 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 demonstrably worthless as it were and and yeah and and and, and by extension the content becomes worthless because people can't access it people can't use it hmm hmm um in a sense, it you know it. it oh, and incidentally, sorry, this book was published published mm. in 1995. Yeah. So it's uh, going on to a 30 year old book, 20 25 year old. You know, it's an old book, and it's still got that yeah. that inflated value because of this perception that people need to be chasing citations and the publications yeah. need to be. You know, it's it's a dare I say it's a cartel. <laughs> You might, use the you might use the C word. I could possibly come in. Um, yeah, I, I think if you if you just look around the sort of publishing ecosystem now, there's an, in academia, there's an increasing use of self publication of um, a, 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 of small sort of almost cooperatives of academics getting together to, uh, uh, um, to publish, there's, been the, uh, there's the whole open access movement, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, yeah. which uh, appears to be gaining more traction. The problem is that, uh, as we were saying earlier that, uh, with the conference, uh, if you've got an academic tenure, it in part depends on publications and citations. And at the moment, we're still tied to the idea that the only valid publication really is in a peer-reviewed journal. Yeah. Or, or 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 a book like this, hmm. and um, who will be taking their their piece of the pie as well? Yeah, that's right. And the, yeah. and the argument is that uh, you can't you know, to operate a proper, proper peer review system costs and so. The thing is, I mean, I've I, I've been asked to peer review a paper for a journal from a leading academic publisher. Um, I wasn't offered anything for doing it. No, wasn't even offered a copy of the of, of the journal when it was pu when the paper was finally published. Yeah. I mean, you hear stories nowadays that it, whereas in the past people used to get a copy of a journal where a paper appeared, now they get offered a PDF. Yeah. Um, and to Which... me, that's just not acceptable. I mean, I, I, you know, but, like but... You, I'm a I, I, I'm a I'm a freelance, and I've now got to the stage where uh, if someone asked me to write something um if they're if they're taking money for it and they're not offering anything i just say no thanks yeah yeah um, and, and, and 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 uh and and this this is similar to it's not the same as but it's similar to the gig economy it's similar yeah. to this idea that exposure is 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 its own payment and all this sort of stuff yeah uh but it's not quite the same in so much as this is actually an institutionalized thing whereby uh, whereby your boss, the university, is going to be on your back saying, what have you published, where have you published it, uh, yeah. what are you doing to get this department noted, noticed in terms of research. Absolutely. It's, this is something, it's not like anyone, it's not like in a gig, I mean, apart from the fact that you have to eat, drink and live, uh, it's not <laughs> like in, in, in a gig economy, someone is saying, well, which gigs have you taken? You know, which 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 jobs have you taken where there's no job security? Come on, prove it. Uh, the, the, in some respects, the, the this academic element is is much more insidious and and but also crucially, I I, I do come back to that sense as well of of achievement. In so much as being published should feel like an achievement, and I, I'm not saying that everyone gets published for the feeling of bit of achieving and of being a published author, but uh, but but if you're having to to to, to to, to get involved in that and, and pay more or less to get published, it feel it does feel less and less 
like an achievement to feel and therefore you might as well be making your work available in terms of an open access and, and actually having it read maybe that's what the focus should be actually is 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 spread is actually accessibility and, and this is where things like for example uh, twitter conferences come in so conferences where people talk and share ideas via twitter in in, in a very public forum and so mm. But the question is, where, where, where can, where, where do you start to take that tree down? You know, so that's the... a very good question. I mean, you you have to wonder how long, it, given the ability to, you know, I, I think the traditional academic publishers are fighting a rearguard action against the modern. Uh, the modern publishing ecosystem we're, we're seeing it in the in the in the print media print newspapers uh, local newspapers are almost dead now thanks to um local social media and uh, lack of investment because they can't uh, because the big companies who own owned them or own them can't uh, can't make a profit from them anymore yeah. um the yeah you know, we're, we're seeing uh we're seeing it in in television where the traditional broadcast media companies are facing uh, problem you know, issues from streaming services, uh, from uh, YouTube, and and, and 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 the you know the fact that in, you know on, on most people carry a phone in their pocket now that can produce uh, broadcast quality video. Mm -hmm. um, we've we've had the uh, you know the, the idea of citizen journalism is is a very um, is a vexed one at the moment. You know, um, and so and I think academic publishing is going the same way. Mm -hmm. um, the you know, and and I, I think also people are just seeing that. Um, again, a, a, a colleague um, pointed out the, the publication of this book, um, and was offering to um, obtain it for other colleagues if they wanted, because they've got access to an academic discount. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but even so, that would only take thirty percent off. You're still well, talking about. Oh, the, you mean the public archaeology book? Yeah, yeah, the public yeah. archaeology book. Yeah, yeah. Well, so, but also, and, 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 and I think that because the, 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 there's a realization, I think that if you're talking about public archaeology and yet the public can't access it, <laughs> then what's the point? Well, and I, I have, I have criticised the academ academicization of, for example, social media platforms in the past. I'm, I'm not going to go into that today, but, but. Uh, as much as it it strikes me as deeply ironic to create a specialism in that line, but but uh, beyond uh, beyond that as well, there is this also the reality that that lots of our, our colleagues uh, will often be putting calls out on their social media saying, "Has anyone got a PDF of this paper?" Absolutely, yeah, because and, and that, so there is this sort of it, it's like it's, it's like the Samizdat Press in the in the so, in the former Soviet Union in the nineteen seventies. These are the, the these these highly these, these highly combustible articles that are yeah. going to bring down the system of being of being. Yeah. Yeah, you know, shared well, around and whatever, you know. But also as well, the 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 fact that the fact of the matter is that it's and it's a little bit like actually the 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 transition that the music companies had to make when digital bit was becoming just more and more common. I remember, you know, I remember buying uh, singles on on cassette tape and and, and CD and this kind of thing. Uh, but when digital downloads streaming initially was becoming a thing initially it was seen as a tremendous threat and and they sort of doubled down on on this idea of copyright infringement as opposed to actually managing the new um the new yeah. and frankly more accessible way in which people were listening to music no longer were people just a fan of one band they now created essentially these these wonderfully eclectic playlists by picking and choosing individual tracks and downloading them it yeah. changed the whole way in which people engage with music for for Absolutely. the better and in this instance, it feels a little bit like like the 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 desire of of traditional publishing methodologies to hold on to their uh, monopoly cartel, whatever word I'm going to use, um, uh, uh, is actually driving essentially this, this undercurrent of sort of black market to people who are sharing PDFs, as you say, with a flat cap in the corner, sort of, you know, I've got something on uh, on you know thermoluminescence from Olduvai. Here you go. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and therefore, it it is manifestly unsustainable, and and uh, and it's not serving the needs of anyone in particular. And so I, I come back to this this question of 
where do you bring down the tree? Is it is it that that the universities have to have to accept that actually the old ways of measuring the output of their academics no longer really a fit for purpose? Is it the the head of the journals they have to actually change their agendas and, and actually focus on a different model in terms of how they make a profit and at what point they make a profit? Uh, whether it's from charge gating content for people who want to read articles, whether it's from charging people who want to publish in the journal, or whether it's actually, God forbid, actually reaching out to other interested parties and maybe creating systems whereby perhaps there's a, a form of sponsorship or a form of advertisement where actually they're, they're, they're not actually punishing people more or less, penalising them for wanting to learn or wanting to be published because it, yeah. it, 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 it's 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 a complicated um, thing, and, and and again, I think we probably should return to it at some point in the future. Absolutely, I mean it, it is complicated, and, and, and uh, you know, I, I oh, no, nobody wants to see the quality of academic work diluted. No, no. Um, but at the same time, uh, yeah, we, we've had. It, fortunately, again, it's changing partly because people have seen it as as, as being quite so outrageous. But um, we've had you know research that's been undertaken using public money whether it's from lottery or government or whatever mm -hmm. but has then been put behind a paywall by an academic publisher now that's not that's happening less and less now that that work, that work normally comes now with a caveat that it has to be published on a, on, on open access terms yeah yeah and so uh, it, in that sense then that that level of the tree is an awareness from the people who are commissioning research though of the outcomes in terms of publishing and actually uh, yeah, uh, uh, yeah. Ab ab absolutely and, and actually that um the uh, to a degree, unless unless they're brought to heel, um, the academic publishers were, were academic publishers in some cases were extracting the urine, as it were. Yeah, yeah. Um, for their own for their own benefit. So yeah. Well, um, and, not, and and there is a question here as well that has to be asked if not answered today about uh, whether or not such structures actually create. Uh, a little bit like a news organisation that, that has no need or no legal restrictions on how it reports the news. Yeah. Uh, it can create essentially a, a bias within certain journals as to how it is that they decide to pre to present research or how it or what research they put they decide to publish, and therefore it can skew the the whole understanding of the field. I'm thinking along lines of of gender, along lines of, of of class oh. along lines of, of frankly uh, just controversial theories say about Neanderthals whether or not they are more or less like us you know if you and have an editor fact, who has particular yeah, and, and in fact just, just, just to pick up that point and maybe we should draw this as close because again we could do a whole watching brief on this yeah um, and you know I'd like be nice to hear from you know colleagues who maybe work for academic publishers or um, have been involved in the production of journals or monographs or whatever to um, to, to comment below the line but uh, I think, particularly when it comes to public archaeology, with all the questions that public archaeology has about access and gender and equality of opportunity, and um, you know, it, to have those debates shut away from most people who've actually got an interest in them is just not tenable. No, no, not at all. I think. I think we should we should leave it there, but this is something we definitely should return to. I think, and maybe, in fact, we uh, uh, there's a couple of specials I think that we're that we're possibly lining up. One of them is to do with uh, the museums, mm -hmm. and another one actually I think could be along these lines. Maybe we should should invite someone in and have a a, a one hour conversation just about that one thing. I that's think that would be yeah. uh, a very interesting yeah. exercise if we can pull that off. Yeah, definitely. definitely. Okay. If we if we can if we can ramshackle our technology together to achieve it, yeah, definitely. Uh, okay, and also, particularly as Archeosoup and uh, and the pipeline are, are are open access platforms. Oh, absolutely, yes, absolutely, yes. Um, uh, although, although well, that, it, it would be nice to see some some uh, some revenue coming from the, the 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 multitudes of people who seem to use RQC videos in their lectures, but that that's something else as well. Um, so, <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, just fifty p, fifty p would be fine.